Hello there, and welcome to our sitting room. So today I want to talk to you about timelines and what's been going on with the timelines. One thing's absolutely for sure for all of us, as we know we are now, without doubt, living in extraordinary times. All sorts of things going on. And it's very disturbing, very distressing, and it has all the hallmarks of initiation, which is outside the comfort zones, thoroughly troubling, disturbing times, especially when you're limited to a human perspective of just a few decades or a century or so of life. So the timeline, so let me explain what I mean about the timelines. Every time you make a choice, there's the choice you make and then the choice you didn't make. And this goes to what is known as a parallel world or parallel universes theory, which has been around for a long time in terms of modern physics. It goes back at least 80 years. So for practical purposes, there are many different timelines that we can choose to be on. But to just to keep it really pragmatic, what has been happening in recent years is we've been arriving gradually at the situation of 2020 where suddenly we find ourselves in this situation of what do you choose? What do you focus your attention on? And there are a great many possibilities. To be accurate there's an infinite number of possibilities but again to be pragmatic from the human perspective what it appears to be to us is that it's separating out into two primary timelines. The first timeline you're very familiar with if you have ever permitted yourself to watch any mainstream media. The mainstream media has got its story, the story is very well established, it is repeated ad nauseam and an even more and ad nauseam to the power of goodness knows what and they say the same things over and over again and it's all about the fear. So that is one of the timelines. And I used to regard this one when I was studying and researching timelines many years ago as the same old, same old. But we can't really say that actually because things have become so extreme that it doesn't really feel like same old, same old. It feels very new and yet actually it isn't. So this whole conversation is full of paradoxes. I do understand that. So that particular timeline, which is most ably described by the mainstream media, is a fear-based one, and it's all about restriction and lack and control. And what has been developing is alternatives. And although, again, there are clearly an infinite number of alternative possibilities. The one that I want to focus on is the one whereby we see everything that's being described to us as not as it seems at all to go straight into shamanism because nothing is as it seems. So if we're told that it's all about the fear, then the guiding principle to look at would be to see that it's possible to literally jump on to another timeline which is all about the love and I'm going to talk about this in what might seem like a strange way because actually the bottom line is it's all about the microbes it really is all about the microbes I've made films last year in 2020 where I've gone into detail and in explaining about the microbiome and we are well aware that we've got hundreds of billions of cells in our bodies but so many more microbes we are actually made up of far more microbes than anything else. So according to the old model, the same old, same old, the mainstream media model, what we have is we have the germ theory of microbes. And this theory says that diseases are caused by microbes. Microbes are to be feared and they are the source of all our problems. And that really is pretty straightforward. That's how it's perceived. And then there's the other timeline, and this is a timeline which is based on love. 
and the coming into the general perception of the microbiome is perhaps the most significant development in terms of the love timeline because what we now are beginning to understand more and more of us and this hark back to my microbiology which I studied so long ago everything I'm saying I was aware of in the 70s when I was studying microbiology which is that the world is full of microbes and these microbes are essential for our survival. That's what I was very, very aware of when I was studying microbiology. But I, what I didn't fully appreciate, I tended to see that as being microbes in the environment. I forgot about my own personal environment and yours and everyone's. So all these microbes are actually the love. They are part of the love story, which is what this second timeline is all about. So when we go on the timeline based upon love, we realize that actually the microbes are literally what create us. We are made of more of microbes than of cells and that they are our best interests at heart. And the antidote to the germ theory is as follows. People only get sicknesses, illnesses, and diseases when they step out of the balance. So it's well known that when people experience pain, that's the way that nature is showing us that we need to make some adaptations and changes to our awareness, our consciousness, our way of life. And it's the same thing with the diseases and the illnesses as well. The microbes that have been located as causative organisms like smallpox, for example, these illnesses are a very big sign to the human race that changes need to be made. And I do want to make this point, because I was so interested to learn when I studied microbiology all the way back in the 70s, that although most people thought that vaccinations were the primary cause of eradication of diseases in the earlier centuries, it wasn't at all true. Actually, it was changes in public health measures. In other words, simple hygiene. So there was a time back in the 19th century and before that London was full of cholera, and that disease was caused by human beings being packed into very tiny spaces, living in great poverty, having inadequate nutrition, and being the proletariat, the working class that was treated like scum by the ruling elite. That's how things used to be. If you go back to Victorian in the earlier days, that was the life of the working person, treated as expendable commodities. And that is why disease was so rife in such places. So what the microbes were then showing the human race at that time is that was no way to live. We need to have equality, we need to have decent standard of living for people. And what happened is when public health measures were put into effect, which was when Parliament brought out laws for the benefit of everyone, what happened is everyone's quality of life increased and disease started to become eradicated. And we did have a relatively small window when such things were much, much less. What's been happening in more recent times is that because we've become more and more out of balance with nature, more and more in the state of disharmony, then the diseases are coming up again as more of a problem. But what we need to focus on is to realize that it isn't the microbes that's the cause of the problems, it's the human race and the way we're choosing to live and the way we're choosing to treat each other. So this new timeline, which is actually has been around forever, which is the timeline of love. This is where we treat each other with love. We treat the animal and the plant kingdoms with love. And we have nothing but gratitude and admiration for all the microbes, because literally without them, we wouldn't even be alive. So it's a funny thing that we've reached a situation that on the same old, same old timeline that I talked about, first of all, the fear-based one, what actually is our nature has been demonized and turned into the source of all problems and what effectively we've had is we've had loads of wars we had wars on drugs wars on terror wars on migrants wars on single parents but the current war is the war on microbes and like all the other wars it's doomed to failure because if you wage war with yourself you are the only one that ends up being 
the loser for it, and that's the story for the human race. So if the human race goes to war against the microbes, it's the end of the human race. It really is that simple and basic. So this other timeline, the love timeline, is all about, first of all, loving and respecting ourselves, and loving, and that does mean forgiveness. A lot of self-forgiveness is really appropriate and important. If you can look at your life as I've done and you can see the mistakes I've made, it puts me in the position of feeling shame, guilt, and then it gives me the opportunity to go into forgiving myself for the mistakes I've made in my life. That's a really important first step. We can then extend that outwards into forgiving other people for the mistakes they've made in their lives too. And some of those, we've just been the bystanders, others they've impacted us severely, and we've suffered as a result of the mistakes other people have made. But when it comes to the microbes, what I'm suggesting we do is we cultivate this sense of universal, unconditional love. You can be unconditionally loving of your microbes and your microbiome because they literally are what you're made of. They give you life and they give you health. And the strong immune system is based upon the strong microbiome. And there are so many things we can do to nourish our microbiome. We can eat kimchi, we can have probiotics, we can, as I like to say, lick leaves in nature, take the microbes into our bodies. That's a really great thing to do. The ones that are in nature and having a stronger connection with nature. And making sure that we food we eat is organic and by doing so we then have a good relationship with the soil which is also teeming with microbes as well. So this timeline of love, think about it about human beings, think about it with regard to the animals, feeling a love and respect for them and their contribution to us and for the plants and for the microbes. So love to you, love to your microbiome and love to the opportunity to be on the timeline of love. Thank you very much and thank you to the fire for being the energy spirit for this film. Thank you.